What's up, my fellow primates, fellow gearheads, or aspiring gearheads? We accept all levels of skill here. Seeing how a lot of you got hard over me talking about turbos the other day, I figured it would only make sense to delve into more interesting topics. What is it, Jimmy? What color is your Bugatti? <laughs> Guards, get him out of here. Push him. Hey, what Kick are you him. Doing? Get off of me. Shoot hey. him. Let's talk about brakes. For us to understand why brakes are so OP, we need to talk about their history. The first iterations of a system used to slow down a spinning circle were mainly on horse-drawn carriages. These systems worked by pulling a lever, which would cause a series of rods to push a block of wood against the wheel itself. Did it work? Probably, but oftentimes this would cause the entire wheel to self-destruct. Is that a dangle in distress I see? Oi, Charles, halt the carriage. Whoa, girl. <laughs> it's not working. Pull the lever. Over-exaggeration, but you get the point. In the 1900s, when carriages were becoming less about horses and more about horsepower, manufacturers needed a better way to slow these things down other than a block of wood. Introducing drum brakes. Instead of stopping the wheel itself, it was more effective to put something on the wheel and have that do the braking for you. This is called a drum. Don't ask me why. Inside these drums are smaller pieces of metal coated with a heat-resistant friction material. These are called shoes. Seriously, who comes up with these names? Anyway, drum brakes were pretty efficient at what they did, for the most part. The cables that connected to them, not so much. They would often snap, fall apart, commit adultery, you get the picture. The only viable solution for this, other than, you know, dying, was to use hydraulic fluid instead of cables. What kind of fluid did they use? Jesus, what the fuck, Jimmy? Why are you still at school? It's glycol based, okay? It's good for high temperatures and shit. But yeah, hydraulic fluid, more responsive, consistent pressure to all four wheels, you get it. But with everything, solving one problem opens up several more. And the usual culprit, heat. Drum brakes are enclosed systems which suck at dissipating heat. Now we can get into the modern era, disc brakes. You see, a rotor is not an enclosed system and can dissipate heat more efficiently. It also brakes better thanks to its larger contact patch. This works because uh, it's shaped like a disc. I'm not a geometrist, all right? Just trust me on this. Or don't, because it's not a real school. At this point, I think you guys know enough about brakes to understand the main part of this video. You see, your car is equipped with an insanely redundant braking system, meaning the amount of things required to fail for your brake pedal to become a neutral gear is highly unlikely. For example, braking power is delivered on all four wheels. Well, it's more like a 70-30 split, because the front of your car experiences a trendy thing called G-force. Point being, even if you eat through your front brakes, which I've seen firsthand, the rear brakes take up the responsibility, albeit with less responsiveness and faster wear. But what if somebody cuts your brake lines, I hear myself say? Each line is independently wired to the master cylinder. You'll still have the power to stop. Barely but it still works. And even in a doomsday scenario where all four lines are cut, you still have your handbrake, you could put your car into manual mode and downshift to engine brake, or simply realize your brakes don't work before pulling out of your driveway. And even if your car has no manual mode or an e-brake, it should be smart enough to tell you that, hey, your brakes are fucked, don't drive me. Well, that's it. See ya.